no matter what sin you're tied to, no matter what sin you're a slave of, through the power of Christ, you can be set free. No matter what your sin is, whether it's alcohol, whether it's sexual morality, whether it's lying, stealing, whether it's pornography, Jesus Christ can save you from that power of sin. Jesus Christ can provide pardon that you might have peace with God that comes only through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But why do you care? Why do you want the things that don't satisfy? Why do you have your lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life? Why don't you consider your eternal life as much as you did what you're going to purchase this morning? Some of you have planned for the day. Some of you have spent an hour, hours out here today. Why do you not think about eternal life? What happens once you perish when you die? When you die, you don't stay in the ground. Your soul will go on, either eternal life in the presence of God or eternal life with eternal destruction in a place called hell. Why will you not consider the things of eternity? Turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. You might have eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. I have something very important I want to share with you. As you know, our country has been yeah. in recession for the past two years. Many people have lost their jobs, lost their homes, their lives have been changed forever. Also, our country has been in war for the past 10 years. We've been in war in Afghanistan and Iraq. The very lives of our, our servicemen, their lives and their, their families have been affected. Also, this country, we've, we've experienced several disasters. We've experienced Hurricane Katrina five, six years ago. We've also experienced the Gulf oil spill. Both of these events changed the lives of American people forever. Well, the Bible says in Matthew 24 that these things were going to happen. It's almost to a sense that God allowed these things to happen. For, he allowed these things to happen for a reason, to get our attention. God is saying, can you hear me now? He said, can you hear me now? He's trying to get our attention. Our attention is that all of us are going to have to stand and give account. There's coming a day where we're going to be judged by God. All of us are going to die and stand before God one day. Now the million dollar question is how are you going to stand on that day? Will you stand innocent or will you be guilty? Are you going to go to heaven or are you going to go to hell? That's the million dollar question. How are you going to stand on that day? We're all going to have to die. 10 out of 10 people die. 150,000 people die every day in, this, in the world. So the million dollar question is how are you going to stand on that day? If you want to know how you're going to stand, let us consider ourselves based according to God's Ten Commandments, His holy law. Have you ever stolen anything? Even that piece of bubble gum that you stole when you were five years, five years old. If you've stolen anything, by definition, you're a thief. If you've ever cursed anyone, if you've ever used God's name in vain. Some of you all are probably cursing me right now as I preach. <laughs> <laughs> As I preach, well, the Bible says if you are blasphemer, if you, if, you, if you use his name in vain. And so by definition, you are blasphemer. Have you ever, have you ever told a lie? Well, by definition, you are lying. Okay? <coughs> now the question is, how are you going to stand on that day? James 3, James 2.10 says, if, even, if you, even if you keep the entire law, if you transgress one, you're guilty of transgressing them all. So how are you going to stand? Are you going to be innocent or guilty? If you transgress God's law, you're going to be guilty on judgment day. You're going to be, you're going to be guilty. Now the Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, that all liars, all thieves, all blasphemers will be, will be appointed to the lake of fire. So will you go to heaven or hell? Mm. If you've transgressed God's law, you're going to go to hell. That's right. Okay? So does that concern you? Does that concern you, people? Well, if that concerns you this morning, let me tell you the good news. John 3.16 said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son, Jesus, in the form of a man to die for your sins. He paid your penalty. 
He paid the fine for you and me. Mm. The Bible says that he was beat all night long for you and me. He was mm. pierced in his side. He was spit on. Amen. He was beat all night long for you Thank and Thank you, me. Lord. And if anyone asks, that's love to me. Amen. But in order to access God's forgiveness, you have to repent from your sins. You have to turn from those things that are against God. And you have to believe Christ. You have to trust God. You have to put all of your trust in Jesus. Again, Jesus paid the fire for you. He paid the fire for you and me. So today, people, if anything, hear me out. Please trust Jesus. Put your trust in Jesus. Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. John Russell can't save you. But Jesus can save you. See, all of those men were good men. See, a lot of people say Jesus was just a man, but he was more than a man. He was the son of God. All of those men that I just named died. All of them died, but Jesus rose again. Amen. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, praying and interceding for you and me. Christ lives in me. Why else would I come <coughs> out here and make a fool of myself before you people? <coughs> but it's Christ that's in me, that's driving me in love and preach the good news to you. That none should perish. But all that, shall have, all that trust in him shall have abundant life, have everlasting life. Thank you. I love you. I'm your best friend and you don't even realize it. A best friend warns their friend of danger. And I'm here to tell you, if you continue in your sin, you're going to die in your sin. And I love you to warn you, this message is more urgent than somebody having cancer, AIDS. This message is so urgent than somebody going over it into a car accident, into a traffic jam. This message is so urgent, it's called sin. And sin will lead you to a place called hellfire. And I love you to warn you, I can tear up inside because people don't love God. The Bible says they're God haters. They hate the things of God. They hate God, it says. They're children of wrath, they're children of the devil. They don't love the things of God. They none seek God. None are righteous. Not one seeks God. The Father has to draw you to your knees and repentance grants it. Stop putting your focus on idols, things of the world. And put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did all the work on the cross. He did the first finished work at the cross. He says it's finished. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Christ Jesus provides a way out of your sin. He provides a way that whoever believes him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes him shall not perish have eternal life. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world may be saved through him. Now whoever believes in him is not condemned. Whoever believes not is condemned already because they have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. This is the combination that the light came into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. They hated the light. They neither come to the light. At least their deeds are reproved. And we're here to reprove you and tell you the truth that you need the light or else you're going to have the darkness of God on you. But he that does truth comes to light that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide on him. Cry out to God, fear God, bow to God. Say, God, I give up, I surrender. God, I wave the white flag. God, I lose, you win. Look to the cross. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Anyone that hangs on the tree is a curse. And Jesus became a curse on the tree. The Bible says, him who knew no sin became sin for us that we become righteousness of God. He can impute righteousness on us for something we don't deserve. He gives us righteousness. Shut up. You can be born again. I can't shut up because I love you, sir. You don't love me.
I be like a guy, let my kid play in the street, play ball, and not say nothing to my kid, and the truck runs him over. I'm here crying out. I'm here crying out to you. Because I love you. I don't want you going to hell. Why are you upset? Why are we going to hell? If you, have you ever lied? How many people lie here before? One lie. <laughs> How many people cheated on their spouse last night? They said I got called out to work and said they go to the girlfriend's house. You're a liar and adulteress. Oh, I got life to the king. I got life to Jesus Christ. I'm a born again man. So you're not out here judging us alone, The Bible says, but you judging me. The Bible says, yes, the Bible says judge, judge righteously. The Bible says judge righteously. It says out of the heart overthrown through the lips. You know what comes out of the heart? Lying, stealing, fornication. Lasciviness. Great what even gluttony is big in this country. What the hell? Overeating. Cheap of lying. I got something that's better. I'm here preaching, I'm here no, preaching salvation. Okay, what's your, you what's your refrigerator going to do for you on the day of judgment? What's your washing machine going to do for you on the day of judgment? It may wash your clothes, but I know somebody who can wash your sins away. It's the power and the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He comes to wash sin away. He can wash your sins away and be better than any time. Any, any, uh, or a dryer. The blood of the Lamb could cleanse you and make you white as snow like Isaiah 118. You, you need to get saved, sir. I love you, man. You need to get rescued. You need to, I have one, but it doesn't save my soul. Did you get a good deal on it? I got, you know what deal? I got the best deal. Somebody paid for my sin. His name is Jesus. I got Jesus Christ paid for my sin, a free gift. He did the work, something I can never do. He hung on a tree. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. A tree of cross. He took the curse upon him for me. Did he do it for you? Are you born again? It says if you are not born again, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says no liar, no thief, no adulteress, no homosexual, no drunkard, no effeminate, no idolater or adulterer would enter the kingdom of God. But there's hope. It said we were once like them. He was talking to the saints that were like that. There's hope through Jesus Christ. He could make you born again. You're in need. You may be in need of a washer, but you're in need of your soul being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You're in need, and you need a Savior to rescue you. That's what you're really in need of. Yeah, God provides clothing. God provides food. Yes. Some people go to extremes. I got to have a big platinum screen in every row, a big platinum screen. Some people go to extremes. I got to get the gold trim on my car. They go to the extreme. But why don't you go to the extreme and fall on your face with godly tears of repentance and say, God, I give up. I need a savior. I need the love of God. Lord, save me from the wrath of God. I beg you. I beat my chest. Oh, Lord, save me from hell. And Jesus can save you. Gentlemen, ladies, from the wrath. He can save you, young children who will disobey father and mother. God can rescue you. He came to save, which is lost. Are you lost today? What we are doing, explain that to me. Are you lost in your sin? Come down here, I am lost. Come right here to me, explain to me what's going on. You can't hear me, sir? Yeah, you, come here. You can come talk to me, sir. I will. Hey, come here, I'll talk to you. I'm here to love you, to warn you, because we don't want to see you go to hellfire. That's why we come here.